Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome you all to this uh, Rubber Industry Connect. Uh, this is a techno-based program. In this program, we do have a conversation with the industry specialist, particularly from the rubber industry and tire industry. Today, I have a special guest, Mr. Ian Wilson. Uh, he is the managing director and co-CEO of the HF Mixing Group. So we'll have a conversation with him about the developments in the rubber, rubber mixing industry technology and as you know Ian has been I think all his life is in the mixing industry right Ian? yeah so yes, thank you for accepting. Oh, too many years yes too many years yeah thanks for accepting invitation um, uh, Ian for this program today I appreciate the time no problem at all Param and thank you for the kind invitation I'm very happy to speak uh, with you today to support also the upcoming uh, conference of the GRTE. So it's my pleasure to uh, speak with you today. Thank you. So let's dive into our conversation. Um, you know, before we go in details about the mixing industry, mixing plant and technology, you know, can you talk a little, you know, your journey? I think you've been with HF for a very, very long time, I think, right? So can you talk about how you started and um, uh, your, your, you know, your journey sure. over the years? Yeah. I actually started back in 1985 with the company Francis Shaw. So I was actually in design engineering from the very beginning. So involved in intermeshing mixer design and also the first tandem concepts when Francis Shaw had the license back then. And that changed somewhat in the late 90s when Farrell Corporation acquired the company Francis Shaw and I started my tenure with Farrell and with Farrell I went through many different uh, uh, experiences so I was involved in product management, design of mixers, I also took some responsibility for a number of years for the customer service department as well and then I ultimately ended up becoming the sales director and on the management team at Farrell when HF Mixing Group acquired Farrell back in 2008, at the end of 2008. Subsequently, within the HF Mixing Group, which has the former uh, companies Harburg, Freudenberger, Farrell and Pamini, I became the business unit director in Farrell for all of the tangential mixers worldwide for the HF Mixing Group. So this meant the full product responsibility from design, innovation to the market aspects as well and the manufacturing so i had the full p l responsibility let's say for the business unit farrell within the group in 2017 there was a restructuring and at that time i started then as a group uh, vice president of sales for the entire group so this was encompassing all of the 13 entities that we have worldwide and i took the responsibility for all of the sales activity for the different teams that we have dotted around worldwide and then in 2020, I stepped up to become the co-CEO and my responsibilities uh, are external. So I have the responsibility for the product, the development, the market, everything related to the customer, so to speak. And my colleague, Holger Ruzio, who is the other co-CEO, looks after the internal business affairs. So in terms of manufacturing and operations, and we both take the full responsibility for the P&L for the group. So basically, I have more than 30 years experience in internal mixer design, engineering, sales, product management. I also have a, a mechanical engineering degree. I'm a full chartered engineer and member of the Institute of Mechanical Engineers and also a member of the Institute of Materials, Minerals and Mining. And this engineering chartered uh, degree was awarded by the UK Engineering Council. So quite some years with HF, if you look at the uh, uh, history uh, and evolution. Wow, wow. So it's a very exciting journey, Ian. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's changed quite a lot, yes, but uh, also been very enjoyable, yes. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm, just... I'm, I'm entrenched in the rubber industry for, for all my life, I would say. I think that's so what is the saying, right? Once you get into the rubber industry, you never get out of the rubber industry, right? It sticks, so, yes. It sticks there. <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, I would for the benefit of people to understand uh, in HF Mixing Group, Farrell. So the Farrell brand still there, right? The HF Mixing Group was formed, which is basically not a legal entity. It's a brand in itself, bringing together the three companies, Farrell, Abbott, Freudenberger and Pamini. 
I'm actually the managing director of the legal entity Harburg Freudenberger, which is headquartered in Freudenberg in Germany. And this is the headquarters and the parent company for the entire group, so encompassing the 13 entities. And in Harburg Freudenberger, we focus on the intermeshing mixes, so the intermix brand, and also uh, our automation solutions as well for the entire mixing line as well. And we cover that the systems business. So this is the biggest portion, and this has around about uh, 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 400 people operating on this. The Farrell uh, participation is split into two aspects. The first aspect is batch mixer related, and there this is located in the UK. They have the responsibility for the tangential mixers, so the Banbury brand, and this comes under the direction of Farrell. So the brand. Farrell is still, the brand recognition is strong for the Farrell name, of course, the trademark and also the Banbury connection as well. So we maintain this in the same way we may maintain the Harbour Freudenberg brand. Yeah. And then it's pretty much the same for Pamini, but their focus is more on downstream activities. So they are now producing the uh, convex, the twin screw, downstream extruder, and also some straining. Uh, uh, products for straining of rubber compounds, filtering of rubber compounds. This is our Filtech, and they are making two roll mills as well. And then in the US, the other division of Farrell, which is Farrell Corporation, was separated to focus only on our continuous mixer business activity. And today we are producing continuous mixers predominantly for the master batch industry in polyolefin applications. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have a clear definition for each segment of each of mixing and so we have a plastic section which is more or less related to our continuous mixer business unit. Uh, although of course we have some niche rubber applications as well for this, but predominantly the biggest volume is plastics. And on the batch mixer side, which is encompassing Farrell UK, Haberg, Freudenberger, and Pamini, this is more related to the rubber industry, although there are again some plastic applications, but very few. And this is predominantly tire and the technical rubber goods market. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the HF group of Farrell, you know, it's a global brand and you guys are everywhere, whether in Asia, whether in Europe or America, every part of the world. Um, can you talk about how is the markets in, in terms of the rubber mixing plants in the various regions, how they're growing? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in general, if we think about the market, I mean, first of all, HF Mixer Group has a good market position, of course. I mean, we consider ourselves the technology leader in mixing technology from single mixing mixers to full systems or so an entire mixing line. And we are a technology leader, not a cost leader. So we are very much focusing on strengthening our USP, so our unique selling points. So we very much focus on the added value for our customers we are through innovation of our products and our services. Uh, the, there is some market disruption, uh, as always, in the industry, but we consider this manageable. And there is a high dependency of HF on the tyre market. And of course, we have increased competition in selective markets from a low to moderate threat, so to speak. But I would say we are very strong, especially on our batch mixer applications, and we are for sure are the technology leader. However, due to COVID and let's say the Russian Ukraine conflict, there was a lot of market disruption over the last three years, especially on the supply side. And this has caused us some difficulties, as you can imagine. So we've had to face increased costs, such as raw materials, semi-finished goods, and also labor issues. And this will continue to challenge us, certainly through, through the remainder of 2023. However, I would say how our order intake is very strong. And we are now building a significant backlog for 2024 due to the longer lead times. From a strategic point of view, we're much more focusing on overall on our operational excellence. So we focus on cost optimization, but also sustainability is a key factor in all of our devel development projects as well. In general, I would say the global market is it's a little bit difficult to predict, of course, but in general, the tire market midterm is growing uh, plus 2%. Beyond 2022, there is an investment for capacity expansions, but this is, I think, slowing down a little bit in 2023. But the North American market is booming right now, so we have a significant amount of uh, activity in North America. 
In general, the technical rubber goods market, there is growth forecast beyond 2022, but some of the industries here are likely to suffer more under the, uh, the global recession, you know, the high inflation, and this is causing some, some uh, headwinds, let's say, in 2023 still. And overall, on the plastic side, uh, uh, we see a big increase in biopolymer activity, and we're starting to now uh, win many projects with this application for our continuous mixer. I would say overall, our key accounts in tire and automotive mainly recovered in 2022, so they're back to pre-COVID level, and uh, our top customers are showing quite good investment levels in 2022 and are planning still good investment for 23, but slightly lower. The conflict still in the Ukraine is still causing a lot of problems. So the high energy costs is really difficult for us to manage, but nevertheless, we have to manage that. And uh, we have to see how inflation uh, uh, develops, but we expect this to get back to a more normal level, let's say in Q4. And on the plastic side, we see many companies still investing, especially in the areas of recycling and sustainability. So overall, we are quite optimistic about the market, despite the challenges, let's say. Yeah, but how, how is the Asian market, if you know, in terms of the- The Asian, Asian market, of South course, Asia, yeah. The Asian market, of course, suffered. China uh, was down from previous years, but we expect that to start to pick up again now. But nevertheless, we are still quite active in China. And one of our subsidiaries located in Qingdao gives us very good access to the China domestic market, but it certainly uh, slowed down in the last 12 months in comparison to previous years. Yeah. Now, how is Indian market for you? Indian market has always been exceptionally strong for us, despite our competition having a, a manufacturing facility in India. I mean, we're in a very fortunate position to have excellent relationships with all the top tire manufacturers. And uh, so the business has always remained strong for us in India. In addition to that, we do have a plant in Bangalore, which is offering the full refurbishment program for our installed base in the tire industry. And we are also producing there uh, two roll mills for the Indian market and also the smaller uh, mixer size up to 140 litre for the technical rubber market. So the Indian market, it, we are doing very well at this moment in time. Yeah. And you do have an office in Thailand as well, uh, supporting the Southeast Asia. We Station. have a service facility, sales service facility in Malaysia, Thailand. In yeah. Thailand, we have around, in Malaysia, Thailand, we have about seven service engineers. I think five of them are located in Thailand. So it's more to service our local customers in Indonesia, Thailand, and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah, great. So let's talk about the um, you know innovations coming out of from the HF Mixing Group. Um, what kind of you know? I think you guys are leaders in the evolution of the technologies, okay, particularly in mixing. So, uh, what kind of innovations are coming up or already invented, and you know what are in in in, in the plan and the pipeline? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, as mentioned before, Perrin, we consider ourselves the technology leader in mixing, and I think that's a uh, a fact, not a dream from our side. Yeah, sure. And there are, of course, demands for more sustainability and efficiency with increasing quality requirements. So there's three strategic fields of action derived from this, and we initiated a number of projects. So we split it into three clusters, let's say. The first would be new concepts and machines. And let's take into consideration in 2022, we already uh, launched uh, five new products into the market. And furthermore, this year, we will launch eight new products. In 2022, we have four new patent applications uh, submitted and approved. On the new concept and machine side, we launched the PES7 rotor, the all new intermeshing rotor last year, which will be the subsequent replacement of the PS5. This has significantly higher throughput and lower energy consumption in comparison to the original rotor. And this will further drive our differentiation in the market to our competition. Also, there is a continuing strength for filtering compounds, straining rubber compounds, and we launched last year our all-new parallel twin screw extruder, the Filtex, for straining. And we uh, launched this already for offline solutions, up to about two metric ton per hour throughput. 
We will now develop over the subsequent next two years an inline solution with higher throughputs, which can also meet the capacity requirements for the tyre industry as well. And these are just small snapshots of our overall activity because we have a heavy innovation uh, development programme and very, very ambitious in respect to this. On the manless mixing room side, I think if you take the latest trends coming from the survey that we conducted with the market in 2022, everybody is looking for more automation and more automated processes to reduce labor. This is done in one respect to improve the quality aspect, but it's also done because labor now in the mixing room is becoming very difficult to secure because of the environmental conditions. So due to the emissions and so on and so forth, so we are working on the manless mixing room concept and we break this down into different topics and in 2022 we had remarkable success with the development of our first automatic feeding of small chemical bags uh, and delivering this uh, completely labour free directly to the mixer. And we are uh, 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 testing the final prototype this year so this will be launched within this year. Also on the automation side we are developing the intelligent mixer line so i think if you take into consideration the design of the mixing process this has a considerable influence on the plant efficiency and in practice uh, we have proven that we can make energy savings of more than 10 percent this is certainly possible and in 2022 we evaluated the first digital assistance system for efficient process finding of smart final mixing. So we have basically developed a model for the final mixing application. And based on a customer's recipe or formulation, we can offer further optimization to this. And from that, they can reach real improvements in terms of uh, output, which pays also into CO2 footprint reduction as well. In addition to that, we're ongoing with developments such as the electric mixer, again, clearly linked to sustainability. This is in full swing. And we are focused very much on emissions as well. So as I mentioned before, the mixing room area is very hazardous. We have a lot of emissions from carbon black, but also the VOCs. And so if we think about the pollutants that are harmful to the operators that are working in this environment, but also another aspect is the treatment of these VOCs. So currently the system typically a standard utilized in the tire industry is a RTO. And this is a combustion process which is highly inefficient. And so we are now looking at a development project for VOC, treating the VOC emissions in the mixing room and curing area and we will uh, uh, further uh, introduce the progress of this over the coming months as well. So we have a strong focus on sustainability. Our goal is to continue to offer all of our customers high performance products and services with ultimately a lower CO2 footprint. As mentioned, we launched five new products in 2022. So the PES7 rotor, the Filtex offline straining extruder, we also launched a complete new hard coating, crack-free, for our batch mixer technology, which offers an extended lifetime. And furthermore, we developed an extension of our 320 intermeshing machine, which has an increase in productivity or throughput of around about 20%. In 2008, we will launch eight further products. So the first electric mixer, the smart final mixing module of the intelligent mixer line, and we are working on topics such as the automatic bag handling, the automation of compound transfer to the batch off. And I could go on and talk for this for hours, but uh, I, think, I think that gives you an idea over all of our activity. Yeah, you can, I can see that all efficiency, uh, smart digitalization, and, uh, you know, and, and also carbon footprint issues are key issues in your development of all the machines now, right? So, yes. yeah. Yeah, and I think, digitization and smart manufacturing is also the key to this. I mean, I think this is clear that uh, uh, the digital factories can reduce energy, improve quality and increase the throughput as well. So we're very much focused on this and the use of data analytics to improve the overall manufacturing performance in relation to the mixing process optimization. So we are adapting AI technology now 
to focus on the reduction of scrap defects, to focus on yield increases. So whether it's from online condition monitoring to predictive maintenance, or if we think about certain formulations that stick to areas of the mix cell, if you have a, a certain viscosity rubber compound that is sticking, for example, to the drop door of a mixer, we are working on an AI approach to optimize the mixing parameters to reduce these uh, issues in the future. And this comes back to the topic of the intelligent mixer and the comment that I made earlier about the smart final mixer. This is a big topic and rather complex. So we started with the intake behavior of the mixing line and then we moved over to the final mixing, but we also want to focus on the master batch, but we have to split the mixing process into phases and each one has to be separately optimized. And to achieve these targets, we are using diverse methods of artificial intelligence. So for example, decision trees, regression, neural networks, if we're thinking about adaptive process models. And uh, this offers significant advantages in terms of the productivity. And of course, if you reduce the mixing time, this is clearly paying into the CO2 consumption and energy consumption is the main focus point because it has the biggest impact on CO2. And the other main focus point is the downtime, of course, as well. And this we have to reduce as well. So how is the feedback uh, from the customer point of view in terms of a smart manufacturing and the distillation? Are they change, making a changes to their systems or accepting this, uh, you know, um, this distillation and smart manufacturing? Yeah, customers are changing. They're develop, developing their own digital solutions. So they're developing cloud services and they're taking data from the mixing line and they're analyzing this data, whether it's rotor speed or RAM pressure and so on and so forth. And then they're uh, uh, trying to make more meaningful use of this data in relation to energy consumption and downtime. So this is all of the developments that we are working on are paying into the clear requirements that our customers have and to ensure that we're going down the right path, we had a big survey in 2022 with over 40 of our key customers. And uh, all of these customers reconfirmed the importance of digitalization and especially the use of data as well in relation to the energy consumption. Yeah. So they are active developing cloud services. They are active in collecting data and examining, reviewing, utilizing the data now. And they're starting to look into AI approaches as well, whereby they can make the mixer more intelligent, so to speak, or the remainder of their tire production as well, of course. And I think the COVID also fast-tracked the changes, I guess, is it right? Yeah. It did for sure. I mean, I think it advanced us significantly on the digitalization side. I mean, just even from a communication perspective, I mean, we're so used now to using Teams. I think before yes. COVID, that wasn't the case. And we were ready for that. And the same for uh, many digital processes, even for startup and commissioning activities where we've not been able to travel to our customer sites. We've had to do a lot of this online in the past three years as well. Um, you know, one industry in the mixing is growing is a custom mixing. So can you comment on how the you know industry is growing in terms of uh, custom mixing, uh, custom compounders? I think that, that area is growing, I guess, right? It is, yes. And custom compounding offers a very important service because a lot of the smaller technical rubber companies decide to, because of the sizable investment needed in a mixing line, quite often when they get to the stage where they need to do a retrofit of an older line, they decide to close down the line and purchase the compound from outside. So again, uh, here, the cost in euro cent per kilogram is very critical, but also they need a high degree of flexibility in the custom compounding market because they have to have a lot of changeover recipes, fast changeovers, yes. different types of compounds as well. So often the downstream uh, applications are configured differently to that of the tire industry as well. So this means uh, uh, we have to focus on faster uh, uh, changes and and so we can reduce the amount of downtime so to speak yeah it's true yeah because the custom you know technical rubber goods you have so many formulations so they, you know, it's, it's better to go for the custom mixer and they provide all the services you need yeah so yes. finally uh, ian i'd like to touch on the you know or your 
vision and uh, the, what expect the growth of HF uh, mixing group? So we have quite ambitious targets for both organic and inorganic growth. So uh, for the, over the next five years, we want to continue our digital journey. So we really want to realize a complete manless mixing room. This means no operators. This is our vision. Whether we achieve that remains to be seen, but this is a clear vision for the HF mixing group. And we want to uh, so increase the level of automation. I think this is clear, and this is a clear requirement. This takes into all aspects of the, for example, in the tyre production, if you think about now in tyres, they have the uh, RFID chips in all car tyres, so they have to have full traceability of the entire process from raw materials through, through to the final product. So our strategy over the next five years is to increase our uh, horizontal breadth, so to speak, to encompass more of the system and the entire mixing line and not only just the batch mixer. So increasing our automation and we have very ambitious targets for growth, uh, both inorganically and organically that I mentioned. And we are also now investing heavily into end of life tyre solutions. Okay. This is in cooperation with a, a UK partner, which is WF Recycle Tech. And it's being managed by our business unit in the US for our corporation. And here we offer a very unique end of life tyre solution, which is not a standard pyrolysis method, but a two stage process, which encompasses also a continuous mixer upstream. So this takes into consideration the full circular economy approach. And from this, we can recover carbon black, but also tyre derived oil. But because of the two stage process, we can reduce the amount of carbon fractions in the RCB, which has obvious benefits when reprocessing this back into the compounding application. So our target is to be sustainable, to add customer value, to grow, of course, but also to automate and digitize our, all of our processes and to cover the entire mixing line process. So we want to be masters of compounding applications and not only referred to as a batch mixer supplier. Yeah, wow. So you're also hitting on the end of the life of tires as well. That's a, yes. that's a very growing market, I think, with all the tire industries also working on it as well. You know? So, yeah. Okay, Ian, thank you very much for the time and sharing the insights and, uh, you know, the accurate developments happening at the HF Mixing Group. It's a pleasure to talk to you today. I appreciate the time today. Thank you very much. Aaron, thank you again, and it was great to have the invite, so thank you so much. Thank you very much. Hey guys, uh, that's the, the session with um, Mr. Ian Wilson, he is the Managing Director, uh, co-CEO of the HF Mixing Group. So now we learn all about what's happening at the HF Mixing Group. I hope you find this session useful to you all. Thank you all for joining this session.